mixes too, because I have one in it. Yeah. What's in that wearing uniform? Good afternoon, good evening, good afternoon, okay, so, <laughs> so thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak amongst you. I know you've been here for a little while and you're probably going to be moving around a bit, but if I could get, just get your attention, maybe five, ten minutes, I would greatly appreciate that. Is that okay? Thank you. So. Again, my name is Nikki Lucas. I've been living in this community for over 30 years. I actually live in Starrett City. I'm a single mom, but I'm not a single parent. And I actually used to own a music store in the community uh, several years ago. I used to sell mixtapes. And um, I've invested a lot in a number of different community organizations. My motivation for doing many of the things that I do is one, because I have a nine-year-old daughter and because I'm blessed to have both my parents who have made it to senior ages. So the things that I do are targeted towards youth and seniors. And I, to myself, while I've made it through several educational levels, it wasn't as easy as it was for some others. I actually founded an organization called the People's First, the People First Democratic Club in November of 2013. Now, while it's a democratic club, it actually has a nonpartisan agenda, which means that if you're not interested in being a Democrat, if you're a Republican, independent, or could care less about a party, you can come and benefit from the information that we give. The reason why I started this particular organization is because growing up, my parents insisted that we be part of some type of political agenda. And the reason being is because they understood that them voting and supporting people and elected officials and leaders within the community was supposed to actually benefit the people in the community. So my parents put pressure on them to make sure that we got proper jobs, that we got proper education, and that there were no obstacles that actually were in front of us as a result of their support. But then as the years went by, I saw a lot of the older leaders kind of getting a little bit tired because they've been doing so much, but there, were no one, there was no one that they mentored to take over the whole process of it all. So what ended up happening is that people stopped voting. In our communities, people barely vote. People don't really know who their elected officials are. If they see them, they don't really know their roles. When you get in trouble or you need some assistance with something, you really don't know where to go. Oftentimes, you get the runaround. And how many of us can say that we or our parents have experienced that? Okay, so what ended up happening, I was part of a group that went from being extremely active to just organizing when it was time to actually get together to elect an elected official. Half the time it was people we probably never seen throughout the year. So what I did, I wanted to go into a totally different direction. I wanted to galvanize people so that we went back to the original mission of what it was supposed to be. We wanted to be able to have a strong voice for the community so that we can group together for community advocacy, 
so that we can disseminate the information that you need when you have questions um, regarding school or housing or something's wrong on your block or something happened in the street. You know it, where it is to go. But part of the problem too is that we're also not part of the, the laws that they create. We're never part of that process. They create these things and it never includes us. So when situations happen on the street or cops are stopping us, it was fantastic to hear about the policing. It's fantastic to hear about the procedures, but there are laws that govern those procedures. And while they don't have to enact their procedures, guess what happens when a situation occurs like uh, uh, Eric Gardner, for, for instance, right? While a chokehold procedure is not necessarily enacted, it's legal for him to have done that because in his eyes he can justify and articulate why he had to use it. He's going to argue that he had to use it because he was faced with some type of imminent danger. And he did within the best interest to protect himself and others around him. So when you're looking at things like the grand jury, and none of us are included on that, we can never input what happens to us. It happens to us because we weren't part of the process. And if you watch some of your parents, and I have been guilty of it in the past, when jury jury comes up, I had something better to do. My father used to say to me, and this is what actually impacted my change, you have to serve on a jury because you could be saving someone like yourself. Because other than that, you're relying on someone else to make a decision for you. So what I do is I invite a lot of the elected officials out. They come out, they define who they are, they define the resources that their um, uh, uh, um, legislative body handles for us, and we've established relationships which we also have to learn to do as a community.